Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. Today's gonna be a video where we actually go over some patients, real life patients lab tests, and we're gonna be looking for malabsorption. Again, a lot of people that come to see me, there tends to be some kind of chronic stress issue where eventually that stress has affected their gut, and essentially they're no longer able to maximize the absorption of a lot of the nutrients coming into their body. So we're going to look at a few different lab tests here, some cutting edge stool tests looking at specific DNA technology, as well as some organic acid testing that will look at these various organic acids which are metabolized from protein that have various companion nutrients that give us a window into how other nutrients in the body are, are doing. And we can see malabsorption and stress based on that pattern. So let's roll up our sleeves and dig in. So we're already on this first test here. This is called the GI map. Now in this test, it's a PCR, which stands for polymerase chain reaction DNA test. And it's going to look at various infections, whether it's pathogen, bacteria, various parasitics, uh, various viral infections, uh, H. pylori. It'll look at bacterial overgrowth. You can see this patient, this person has actually low beneficial bacteria. So you can see lactobacillus is a beneficial flora along with bifidobacter is also a beneficial probiotic. So off the bat, you can already see the person has low beneficial bacteria. That's automatically starting to make me feel like there is a dysbiosis. Dys meaning out of balance, biotic meaning or biosis meaning bacteria. So out of balance regarding bacteria. Typically more bad stuff than good. We already know the bacteria that's good is low, right? So let's go to the next page. So off the bat, looking at potential autoimmune bacteria, we look pretty clean, but look up here. We already have some dysbiotic flora showing up. So we have Pseudomonas species and Staphylococcus species. So now off the bat, that theory on page one regarding the dysbiosis, we already know is present because we can see it here based on the Pseudomonas and the Staphylococcus. Go down a little bit further. Look at this. We got the trifecta. Woo! Blasto, Diantamoeba fragilis, and Endolimex nana. And we go a little bit lower, there's also candida. So we got a bacterial overgrowth. We have three parasitic infections, not one, but two, but three, blasto, dientamoeba, and endolimix nana. We have candida albicans, and we have low beneficial bacteria. And if we don't add any more insult to injury, we also see low levels of enzymes. This is important. The more stressed your gut is, the more stressed your adrenals and your blood sugar and sleep is, the more it puts your body into a fight or flight, the more that shunts your body from being able to adequately produce enzymes. And you can see it right here, looking at the various compound elastase, which gives us a pretty good marker of what's coming out of the pancreas. So elastase is low, low pancreatic output. And we also see low SIGA, which is the localized immune system in the gut. And that kind of makes sense. How's your immune system going to be when 70 to 80% of it is in the gallt and the malt, which is in the stomach and the small intestine, when you got three infections, three major parasitic infections, a candida overgrowth, low beneficial flora, and two dysbiotic bacterial overgrowths, right? And then we also can't break down our food well. So you see this sets us up for the perfect storm in functional medicine world. That's why we look at the gut, because most people, they would be passed, and they wouldn't have this type of deep assessment to figure out what's happening under the hood. So now on top of that, kind of go back to page one. In summary again, we saw low beneficial flora there, and then we saw very high amounts of dysbiotic bacteria here, and then we saw blasto infection, dientamoeba fragilis, endolimix data, high levels of candida, and again, these tests aren't the best for picking up candida. The best is clinical indicators like jock itch or fungal nails or thrush-coated white tongue or um, itchy rectum or itchy anus, dandruff, those types of things are telltale signs of fungus, and we actually have it on the test too. Also, the low localized immune system and the low levels of enzymes. So let's switch gears and go to the organic acid test because this will give us a window into other companion nutrients that's going on in the body. So down the list we go. So this is the summary page. So real quickly about organic acids, organic acids can go high or go low. High organic acids, my analogy is it's like making a million dollars a year but spending two. You're still a million bucks in debt. It's a lot of debt. Versus someone on the low side, low organic acids, that's like making 10,000 a year, but you're spending 20. Yeah, so you have a lot less on the supply side, 
which is kind of important. So typically lower organic acids mean it's a longer type of chronic issue, where higher means it's more of an acute issue and there's typically a little bit more resiliency there. So high and low, both are signs of deficiency. Don't, don't let the high fool you. High still means there's essentially a functional deficiency based on the high demand. So high and low, the sweet spot's kind of in the middle. And again, organic acids are metabolized from protein. So what that means is the proteins are metabolized to various organic acids, and these organic acids have various companion nutrients that they essentially are, are symbolic of. So like various things like subarate may be uh, symbolic of carnitine, or homovanolate or vanomandolate may be symbolic of adrenaline or dopamine level. So various organic acids have their companion nutrients. So high or low, we would look to that companion nutrient as a source of solution. And the big five are always going to be diet, number one. Number two, malabsorption, digestion, or food allergens, gut issues, basically. Number three is going to be emotional stress and or sleep. Four is going to be toxicity. Five is genetics, like MTHFR, genetic individuality with certain nutrients, MTR, COMT, vitamin D receptor issues. So all those things are going to be at step number five with the genetic factor. So going back in here real briefly, this person, what do we see, right? They already had this test over here with all of the infections. What do I think when I see infections? I always think potential malabsorption. Let's go look at that now. Low free form amino acids, low amino acids, going to the neurotransmitter section, more low amino acids, very low. That means this is a long-term type of situation happening here. Low serotonin, low dopamine, low amino acids, low amino acids, and we keep on scrolling down here. So you can see the moral of the story here is malabsorption, malabsorption. And if we go to each section, I don't want to go too deep into this test because it can be quite... Um, quite an episode going through it, but look at carnitine, fatty acid, everything's low. Uh, look at the energy production, everything's skewed into that first quintile. Uh, look at the L-lactate, low amino acids. Look at the B vitamins, everything's low. Look at methylation, low. Look at neurotransmitters, everything's low. Not bad with the oxidative stress. Uh, detox, low, high. Bacteria wasn't that bad, so this organic acid test missed the bacteria even though we had a whole bunch pop up here. That's why we always want to do multiple tests to help have a safety net in case we miss something. So going back here, what's the take home? The take home is with functional medicine assessments that are holistic and broad spectrum with a clinician that has a knowledge base, we can pick up infections that drive dysfunction in the body. Now, when we see things like low amino acids like that, what does that mean to me? What does that mean to the person at home watching this video? It means we're in a catabolic state of physiology. Our body is breaking down faster than we are building up. Our body has to take in nutrients, it has to be able to digest it, assimilize it, utilize, utilize it, and get it into the bloodstream and actually use it. And that's what's happening here, but we have a malabsorption. We have lower amino acids because gut stress creates malabsorption. So we got to fix the root cause from a diet perspective, a stress perspective. We have to support the adrenals, but also fix the underlying gut issue that's driving that malabsorption. And with this person here, we may have to do a couple of rounds of gut killing to really get things cleaned up because there's a lot of different things happening with these infections. So if you have a chronic issue, we got to look deeper at the gut, got to look at the malabsorption and the nutrients under the hood. So again, this is Dr. J signing off. If you feel like you have an issue that kind of resembles this and you want to look deeper under the hood of what could be the potential cause, we need a holistic approach. So click and subscribe, click on screen and reach out and schedule a consult with myself. Again, thanks. This is Dr. J signing off. Have a great night.